everybody, welcome to my channel and welcome back if you've been here before. My name is Emma and today I'm here with a bit of a different video to what I've been doing so far. I've been doing a lot of tutorials up to now but I put the idea out there last week that maybe I'd like to do some videos that are a bit of a crafty catch up where I show you the different projects I'm working on and maybe some things that I've finished. And I put the idea out there and a few people said that they'd like to see that. So I thought I'd give it a go. I've also been inspired by some fantastic YouTubers who do these sorts of videos. Uh, I watch a lot of them, but I'm just going to mention three today that I know most of you will have seen their wonderful channels. And I know that these people pointed lots of you in the direction of my channel. So I'd just like to mention, first of all, Davina from Little Workroom Crafts. Davina is such a fantastic maker. She's got so much knowledge. She's really, really talented and her passion and enthusiasm just shines through. And I love seeing her projects and seeing what she's working on. I also really enjoy watching Ellie from Craft House Magic. Again, such a fantastic maker, so talented. She does all sorts of things from dressmaking to knitting and to quilting and she's got such a lovely personality. I love watching her videos and also Mel from Handmade by Gypsy Tulip. Mel, again, an incredibly talented maker who does a variety of crafts and she's just a joy to watch as well. So I know you will have all seen their wonderful channels, but just in case you haven't, definitely check them out. They're super inspiring ladies. So, like I said, this is a bit of a different video for me today um, and it probably will be a bit of a longer one. So get yourself a cup of tea or coffee and settle down while I talk to you a little bit about the things that I've been making lately. So we'll start with things that I've finished and I'm quite glad that I actually do have a couple of things that I've finished because a lot of what I do is sewn by hand so it feels like things take me a really long time and I don't have finished items every week or sometimes not even every month but recently I've finished a couple of things so the first thing I've finished is a little gift for a baby that was born and it's in the post at the moment being sent right across the world and I don't think this person will watch this video well hopefully they won't so it won't spoil the surprise but um, I made um, Plum Mouse from this wonderful book. This book is called Rainy Day Sewing and um, the patterns in this book are just absolutely beautiful. So when I decided to make a gift for a little baby, I just thought that this was just the sweetest little mouse toy. Um, Obviously, it's more of a decorative piece for, for a little baby at, at this moment, but when she gets older, she'll be able to play with it. And I added a little handmade quilted bed for little Plum Mouse to go in, and I'll show you some footage, some, vid some photographs of that now. So what I did to make this was I took some of the foam that I like to use in the... Um, sewing cases and baskets that I make and I quilted it as like a mattress and then I added a quilt over the top of it and joined it all together with bias binding and on the quilt top of it I added a heart motif made out of half inch hexagons and I added some embroidered details as well which I seem to do on everything at the moment. The heart pattern is a pattern by Miss Leela. Yeah, so her Instagram is Miss Leela and she also has another Instagram called The Maker's Stash and she has some patterns and the heart design is by her. She has, in her pattern, she has heart designs in all sorts of different sizes of hexes and um, they're designed to go in a hoop and she has a lot of instructions about how to do that. But I decided to add mine onto this mini quilt for this um, little mouse to sleep inside. It's like, it's like a little sleeping bag. Um, so yeah, I used a lot of Liberty scraps to make this, um, as I did for the mouse's ears as well. And yeah, it was so fun to make. I really enjoyed it and I, I really hope the 
recipient, a little baby, but um, also her mum. I hope that they really like it. So if you follow me on Instagram, you might have seen a while ago that I started making a hexagon storage basket and it got such a really phenomenal response. A lot of people were interested in it and were asking me to make a pattern. So I decided I'll give it a go, I'll, I'll make a pattern. It's been a long time in the works because I've been tweaking it here and there and getting it really thoroughly tested because I always want to make sure if I put a pattern out into the world that it is gonna be the best it can absolutely be. So you won't find me churning out patterns regularly. It'll be periodically and you know, they will be the best that I can absolutely make them. So it's almost ready to release. Um, so here's the small version. I made this a, a, a while ago. But as part of the testing process of this pattern, there's a, there's a small one and there's a large one. Part of the process, my, my dad made one. Um, it was during lockdown in the UK, which we're still kind of in, but a lot of things have been relaxed now. But at the time, um, he was saying he fancied giving sewing a go. He had a sewing machine that belonged to my sister that he was playing about with. And then I was telling him about my pattern and things and he decided he wanted to give it a go. And he really is a novice sewer. He, he, it was actually the first thing that he made. So I'll insert a picture of what my dad made here and I'm going to write a blog post about it as well. But he, he did an amazing job of testing the pattern. And what I did was I gathered supplies together for him and I went and dropped them at his um, back fence so that then when I'd gone, he collected them and he made it like by himself. Like I didn't help him at all. And um, it was so nice. Like we was, we started to have conversations about sewing and he's been watching my YouTube videos. And it was just so lovely that um, my dad started getting interested in sewing and in the things that I'm making. So I was really, um, really happy about that. So when it came to Father's Day, I thought, right, I've got to make him something really special. So I um, made him a hexagon needle book and a hexagon sewing case. So both of those are my patterns. The needle book is a free pattern. The hexagon sewing case is um, a paid for pattern. I released it in March and um, if he decides he doesn't want to continue with sewing, he could always use the hexagon sewing case as a case for his pencils and his art supplies or anything really. And I tried to choose fabrics that I thought that he would really like. So there's some nice little details on there. There's a little cat playing a violin and my dad really likes musical instruments. He's very interested in violins at the moment and we all like cats in our family. So, I chose, I chose some bright colours as well and he was really pleased with it, I think. <laughs> so as well as make my own design ideas up and create my own sewing patterns, I really love making other people's patterns too. And I find that really relaxing because I don't need to think about anything. I can just focus on the actual stitching. And one thing that I really love is um, being part of a block of the month programme. And I'm really lucky that this year I've signed up to two blocks of the month programmes. And last year I was doing one block of the month. And I thought I'll show you them now. They, the idea of a block of the month, if, you, if you're not familiar, is basically to make a large quilt top. But you get part of it every month. So the idea is that you make that bit every month and then by the end of the year you'll have a finished quilt. Now, I'm not very good at keeping up with things, but I like the block of the month for a few reasons. Um, I like that, like I said, I don't need to think about it. It's I just focus on the stitching, um, which is nice and relaxing and it's an alternative to sort of designing things yourself. The fabrics are provided and I really like that too. As much as I love choosing fabrics and putting colours together. I also like that it's done for me and that, again, I can just concentrate on the making, but I also find it quite affordable, affordable because the block of the month kits provide you with lots of small pieces of fabric and you couldn't buy such small pieces unless you had a big stash of scraps that 
and I do have some scraps but they wouldn't be big enough scraps um, to make quilts like this. So you get a lot of small pieces which means your quilt has a lot of variation in the colours and the fabrics that are in it. So first one that I'm going to tell you about is the patchwork of the crosses and it is a Lucy Boston pattern. Now um, Lucy Boston, this is, this is a book about Lucy Boston and as it says um, in the beginning, um, she made her patchworks in about 1938 when she was living in Cambridge but from reading this book I actually learned that she used to live not too far away from me which was um, such a surprise. And this book's really super inspiring if you love antique quilts. There's lots of beautiful designs in it. But if you aren't familiar with the patchwork of the crosses, I'll find that page for you now. So there it is, patchwork of the crosses. And as you can see, it each block is a variation of a cross design. Um, they're all the same. They're all pieced in the same way using elongated hexagons like honeycomb shape they're called and there are squares in between but the way the fabrics are arranged give quite a variation between the blocks and I think it's just such a beautiful quilt so I've been thinking about this block of the month for so long and when lockdown happened I thought right I'm, I'm just gonna go for it um so I joined it late basically I didn't join in January I joined in March and I got a few months together and I'm still on the first box <laughs> I really do want to speed up but um so I, I completed this one right at the beginning of lockdown this is the first block and I just love it love the colors um and I love that with like I said with these kits uh, every month you get different fabrics and you get just the right amount to make the, this block so if I was going to make this myself, I'd, I'd have to buy like a fat quarter of this and a fat quarter of that, fat quarter of that, fat quarter of that, and I'd have a lot left over or I'd have to repeat them. So I just find it quite a good way of having a lot of variation in the quilt. So that was one block. And then I'm in the middle of um, this block here. So I'm just putting the outside pieces of this blue onto it. And originally in the kit, there was actually black fabric here, but it was a black check, but I swapped it for blue. It's the first time I've ever swapped a fabric in a block of the month kit, and I will never swap any other fabrics out because I always love um, what comes in the kit. And I should have said before, the kit is from Sew and Quilt, and they come in these pink boxes. And um, inside, it's such, there's such a joy to open up inside you get all of the fabrics and then you get all of the paper pieces that you need as well for that month and in in this one there's a lot of liberty fabric which is obviously something i really really love using um so yeah so that's i'm really keen to do some more on that it's really enjoyable and i can't wait to see it grow so that block of the month is, I should have said, is English paper pieced. Um, that's how the quilt is constructed. This next block of the month I'm going to show you is a mixture of machine piecing and um, applique and a little bit of English paper piecing as well. And this is called the Liberty Periodical Quilt and it is by Pretty Fabrics and Trims. And they have a beautiful Instagram and a beautiful website as do so and quilt so definitely check both of those out so this again is monthly and it's um it's an irish chain design so here's uh one of the blocks that's pieced by machine and there's another one again yeah liberty fabric so that was the january one that was the february one but along with each month along with a um a machine pieced block there's also a hand pieced one. So there's the January one, it's really pretty. And the February one, I'm, I'm almost done with it. It's got hearts, um, but I won't pick it up because it's still loose in pieces, but maybe I'll share that one next time. But again, that's a really fun one. I am behind on it, but um, I'm not putting that pressure on myself. It's 
they're what I do for my hobby, it's my enjoyment, so maybe by the end of next year I might have finished both of those quilts, who knows. So as you'll be able to tell from what I'm show going to show you next, I do love hand-pieced quilts, long-term projects, and so the final one that I'll show you today, I do have more on the go. But um, there's one I started recently, and this one is the Alexandria quilt, and it is by Tales of Cloth, and it is a spectacular design. It's like a mandala design, like a medallion, if you like. It what you work around for quite ooh, quite a lot of it. Um, again, it's English paper piecing. This time, I'm choosing the fabrics and putting them together, and. Sometimes when I make quilts and things like this, I think about what what room it's going to go in and what it's going to match decor wise. But with this, I'm just picking fabrics I love. I'm just going for it with no real plan other than a vague colour scheme of the sort of pastels that I tend to pick. Um, but I'm really loving this one too and can't wait to, to work some more on it. I'm lucky enough to be an ambassador for Ava and Neve, which is a wonderful Liberty fabric shop in Australia. And they send me their Liberty Society bundle every month. And you get in that bundle 10 fat sixteenths of Liberty. And it is such a really good way to build your stash. Um, I've never like had a Liberty stash before. I've only ever had like a few pieces. So it's so exciting to have these pieces arrive and I'm going to be putting them into this quilt so this one came from one of their bundles um not this one no but yeah this one and then there's going to be more as I go out in fact here are the um here's some more from their bundles these stars are going to be attached next so there's this one um this one and this one but I haven't decided yet. There's going to the six stars that go around the edge of this. I haven't decided whether to do them all in different fabrics or to repeat these three as you go around and how to place that. There's lots to think about. So I'm really taking my time with this project because I like putting the thinking into it. So I tend to have projects for different reasons so ones that make me think, ones that uh, I'm designing, and then ones that it's all done for me and I can just do the stitching. And I quite like that variation. Are you like that? Do you have a mixture of projects? Ones that you design yourself and or ones that are done for you with a kit? What do you like to stitch? Um, I'd love to know if you let me know in the comments what's your preferred type of stitching. I have actually made a couple of purchases re recently because I am going to be moving into a different sewing room. This is my sewing room at the moment and um, it's a lovely cosy room. I really love being in here. It's cosy, it's got all my favourite things in here, it's my little place to come and um, take myself off to when I want a bit of quiet time and I'm really lucky to have this room, so so lucky. It is though quite a dark room and we've decided that it would it would be okay for me to switch from this room into another room, another spare bedroom. We've got this room and another room that are essentially spare bedrooms. So um, that move is in the works. I'm planning all sorts of things. Um, I bought a new table, a big long table to put into the new sewing room and I'm going to probably see this um, cabinet here I'm planning on painting that so that it will match the room I have another chest of drawers as well I'm planning on painting that too so there'll be a couple of new pieces of furniture and then I'm going to upcycle what I've got and also I've got lots of trolleys in this room I'm going to take them across so I'm really excited about moving into a lighter lighter brighter room it's got better electric lighting but also it's got much better natural light and it's bigger so I won't feel as cramped because this room is very tiny it's cozy and lovely but it is very tiny 
So I've bought a couple of things um, for the move. So the first thing I bought was this wool pressing mat. Have you seen these before? Um, as you can see, it's, mine's still got the plastic on, so I haven't tried it out yet. Um, but I've heard fantastic things about these pressing mats, so I'm really excited to give this a go. I got this from Sew and Quilt. Um, so one of the things that I've bought for my new sewing room is a dedicated space for cutting and pressing. So I'm really excited to have this. I do have a mini ironing board, but I think this is going to give a much firmer place to press. And yeah, I've just heard great things that they work really well. So I'm keeping it wrapped up though. <laughs> I'm not going to use it until I move into the new space and I set up um, my new cutting and pressing area. I'm really excited about that. So that's that one. And then also from Sew and Quilt, I bought a couple of packs of these lovely quilt hangers. I think these are going to be brilliant for hanging up blocks, for example, this um, and sort of use it as decor in the new sewing room. So I'm put hang my blocks up and look at them and then it'll give me inspiration and ideas and also decorate the room. The room is uh, what predominantly white. It does have some floral wallpaper in there. I like a bit of floral wallpaper, <laughs> as you can tell. Um, so yeah, I'm really pleased with these again, if I didn't say they're from Sew and Quilt. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm excited about decorating that space and, and moving and being in a much lighter place. And hopefully that will make my videos lighter as well, because I do appreciate this is a bit dark in here. Um, so yeah, that's, that's it really for my crafty catch up. I hope you liked seeing the projects that I've been working on and I hope you liked seeing what I'm in the middle of. As I said, I don't tend to finish things very often. Um, so it might be some time before I do another one of these updates. I am a slow stitcher. Um, that's It's funny how I've changed, really. I used to want to make things quickly all the time. I used to rush. I used to not have as much time as I do now as well. Um, so I'm, I'm really lucky that I can spend more time on my sewing. But my whole philosophy around it has changed so, so much. And I think once I sort of let go of that pressure to make things quickly and I slowed down and found English paper piecing, um, it really did change everything for me. It's so relaxing so calming and i just find it so enjoyable and as i've said before that's that's why i'm sharing what i make with you guys um and i really hope that if you haven't given any um slow stitching english paper piecing or embroidery i'll show you some embroidery next time but if you haven't given any of that a try then um yeah give it a go I think you'll enjoy it. I think it's such a great hobby to have. So um, I'll, I'll say goodbye and I'll see you soon. Hopefully um, on Monday at my usual uh, upload time, which is 9pm UK time, there'll be the next instalment of the seasonal sampler mini quilt. Um, as long as I can get to film that over the weekend, then there shouldn't be a problem, it should be up. But if for whatever reason something crops up and it's not up, I'll let you know. <laughs> but yeah, until then, um, thanks so much for watching. If you liked this sort of video, let me know because um, I will make more in the future if you like to see what I'm up to. Um, of course, I'll still be doing tutorials because I've got so many ideas for those. So yeah, I thought maybe a mixture of videos, these sort of chatty ones and then um, tutorial based ones as well. But that might be a good balance on my channel, but my channel is for you guys. So you let me know. I enjoy making every type of video. So you let me know what you like to see. So until next time, thanks ever so much for coming to watch and take care and happy sewing.